Okay, so in this video, I've, I've come up with some interesting information about the uh, the scandal surrounding Swimming Australia and uh, Shane, Shana Jack and you know Sun Yang, Sun Yang and uh, Mac Hort and all the rest. And um, they've actually interviewed the CEO of Swimming Australia today. And there's a lot of inconsistencies there. So I'm going to play the interview and then we're going to look at the inconsistencies. I'm going to run through it as logically as I can so you understand uh, where, where, where I'm coming from and why I'm not happy with the whole situation. So let, let's have a look. So this is the, uh, the segment on the sunrise this morning. Now, Aussie swimmer Shana Jack is vowing to clear her name in the wake of the doping scandal as new details emerge about her failed drug test this morning. She's now released a two-page statement on her Instagram account. It gives her version of the events that led to her being sent home from a camp in Japan. Her ordeal began on Friday the 12th of July when she... So I'll just stop it there. I've got I've actually got the full two page statement which we'll look at in a moment. So uh, just to let you know that we'll be analysing that and there's a, a real mic drop moment, sort of a penny drop in my head of you know what what's going on here. So just um, stay tuned for that because it's going to be uh, something that even the press didn't even pick up, but which I did. So let's have a look at that in a minute. She was told she tested positive for the drug Legandrol. Now it's a muscle building drug often used by bodybuilders. Soon after, Shana packs her bags and leaves Japan, saying nothing to her teammates about why she's going home. They weren't told the reason. A week later, on Friday the 19th of July, she receives the B sample results, which again Again, test positive. Shana says she collapsed on the ground upon receiving the news. Ten days on and Shana is now fighting to prove her innocence. She's working with her lawyer, management team and doctor to work out the source of the substance. She's sounding a warning to others saying no athlete is safe from the risks of contamination and that she did not and would not cheat and will continue to fight to clear her name. Let's bring in Swimming Australia Chief Executive Lee Russell, who joins us from Melbourne this morning. Lee, morning. Now, Shana is now fighting Good for morning. her reputation and her career, and Australia Swimming is under a drugs cloud. What happens from here, and what support will Swimming Australia be offering? Well, we'll continue to support Shana through a process. From here, the, there's a pretty lengthy process to take place. She still needs to be interviewed formally by ASADA and certainly from there a process uh, will need to happen where she'll receive a hearing somewhere down the track and then a, and a potential final sanction and then of course there might be an appeals process as well. Okay, that's all fair enough but it's now been 10 days since she got her B sample. Uh, Swimming Australia is being criticised for sitting on this. So I've got to applaud, uh, applaud Samantha Armitage here. She really does. <laughs> I think she smells a rat too, like myself. Um, so that she's going to criticise the uh, CEO of Swimming Australia for you know keeping it secret for so long, basically. Words like cover up are now being thrown around. What do you say to that? Well, under the ASADA rules, we were simply just not able to publicly release any details of the particular matter. Okay, we'll stop it there, because I'm going to expose that as a lie. Um, I, maybe I'll do it now. Okay, so she's saying that under SADA rules, you're not allowed to say that an athlete has tested positive. All right. So if I go to, I'll just go to my Safari window here, and I'll show you that this is not the case. So we've got to hear Richard... Richard Ings, he was a former ASADA chief, and uh, he accuses Swimming Australia of trying to cover up Sh Shana Jack positive tests. And so the accusation is that, um, you know, basically Swimming Australia is trying to throw uh, ASADA under the bus, aren't they? He's saying that, oh, it's, it's not us, we, 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 want, we wanted to tell, you know, the public about it. And uh, as Richard Ings points out in his, um, so let's say his Twitter account, it says that uh, if Swimming Australia is suggesting their anti-doping policy <clears throat> approved by ASADA forbids them from announcing the Jack provisional suspension, they are wrong. So I think you will see if we can click on that. Uh, so here we go. So it's basically saying here, so they've got the anti-doping policy and they're saying, actually, well, it's quite lengthy. So what I'll do is I'll go back because I've got a summary here of what it says. So section 14.3.1 permits Swimming Australia to go public. Um, there we go. 
Section 14.3.1 of Swimming Australia's anti-doping policy states that the identity of any athlete or other person who is asserted by ASADA or another anti-doping organisation to have committed an anti-doping rule violation, they may publicly be disclosed by ASADA or any other anti-doping organisation only after notice has been provided to the athlete or any other person and simultaneously to WADA and the International Federation in accordance with Article 14.1.2. So basically they're saying <clears throat> that after... Uh, WADA tells the athlete that they've uh, got a positive result, then you know, Swimming Australia can also, like the uh, governing body can also do it. So <laughs> saying that they, they can't be uh, they can't be disclosed is an outright lie there. So uh, very, very, very interesting. Very, very interesting uh, what I find out. Just, you know, and I'm just one person. I'm just one person. You know, I'm not a news organisation. I'm I'm one person just commentating on this, doing my own research. Now, surely these investigative journalists should be able to come up with this. This, you know, I, I maybe research for maybe half an hour, an hour. You know, what's what's going on with these investigative journalists and not picking up these things? Which you know, a, a you know, a, a non-professional journalist like myself, you know, he just does it for um, for his own interest on YouTube, picking up this sort of thing. So let's go back. Let's go back to the. Uh, let's go back to the interview. <clears throat> I'll select that window again, and we'll get back to the interview, and we'll see what else comes to light. What what else um, the CEO of Swimming Australia has got to say, and what other things I can uh, dispute. Until either Asada or the athlete in question, Shana, spoke about the about the actual matter. Okay. Were well, these not extenuating circumstances that you might talk to okay, Shana? So we'll just go Until back. either Asada. Let's go back. Got her beat. Uh, and a potential final sanction. And then, of course, there might be an appeals process as well. OK, that's all fair enough. But it's now been 10 days since she got her B sample. Uh, Swimming Australia is being criticised for sitting on this. Words like cover-up are now being thrown around. What do you say to that? Well, under the ASADA rules, we were simply just not able to publicly release any details of the particular matter Wrong. until either ASADA or the athlete in question, Shana, spoke about the about the actual matter. Okay. So she's basically saying that it's up to the athlete to, <laughs> to reveal to the public that uh, they tested positive, which is absolute rubbish. You know, that's, that's a bit like saying uh, um, it's up to a student who cheated on an exam to tell... Uh, tell their mother that they cheated on the exam, not the uh, actual school principal, you know. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just ridiculous what's, what they've come up with. And um, I don't know how she can keep a straight face and, and talk about this stuff. Okay, were these not extenuating circumstances that you might talk to Shana and say, we need to release this because swimmers, high-profile swimmers like Mac Horton, are uh, unwittingly walking right into the eye of the storm here and taking a stand against drug cheats on the podium. Yeah, it was Shana's call when to release uh, her private information and uh, what Shana had said to us was that she wanted to make sure that her teammates got through the World Championships in Guangzhou That's and fair Korea, enough, which but just they finished didn't. last night. So did you go, when did you go to Shana and yeah, say, they... we need to release this information to the public? She didn't. We're not able to do that under the ASADA rules. Actually, that's a matter Rubbish. for Shana and her lawyer but could you and, not and her team sit down to determine behind the scenes and have this out and say, OK, this is going to look bad for us if we don't release this because these things leak to the media, as has happened, and then it looks like a cover up. Our best advice to Shana was to talk to her legal team and make sure that she was doing the best thing for her and her circumstances. What about Mac Horton? Has he been left, uh, thrown under the bus? He's now making statements on his social media on his own. Where is Swimming Australia in all of this, supporting them? <laughs> Basically, they're just, they're just trying to not look bad, are they? You know, just trying to... Um, they, don't, they don't care about uh, Mac Horton, you know. They're swimmers. Well, I think that actually Mac's, sta Mac's stance uh, in uh, relation to his podium protest, really, w we actually very much support Mac in that. Uh, he certainly has all of our support, no, as didn't. does Shana d does, while she's undertaking her process around this particular matter. And I didn't support Mac for this very reason, that I knew something would come out about the Australian swimmers, you know. It's just very hypocritical for Mac to do that when... when uh, we actually had, uh, you know, uh, 
One of our swimmers had a 12-month ban for missing three drug tests. So is Sun Yang entitled to the same presumption of innocence as Shana Jack right now? There we go. Double talk. Double well, talk. it's not my job as Swimming Australia CEO to discuss Sun Yang. He's not our athlete. He's certainly not. Uh, we haven't made any comment about Sun Yang. Certainly, we, but hang on, we Mac believe Horton's that our protesting. process in Australia is working. Mac Horton has made a huge Mac worldwide protest. protest that that Australia support. Most Australians were behind him. And also, at the time, I, I'm pretty sure it was reported that Swimming Australia were supporting him as well, but uh, I could be wrong, but um, I know, you know, the legends of the sport, Dawn Fraser and, and uh, you know, uh, who else was there, Libby Trickett, I think, as well, you know. Taking this on, sorting out what's going on behind the scenes in your sport, and you say you support him. And we're completely behind So why behind did Mac we well. not come clean with something that happened? Well, there we go. She said we were completely behind Mac as well. But she doesn't want to issue a statement. I, I just don't get it. And in our private drug testing well over two weeks ago. Well, I simply, as Swimming Australia, simply could not speak under the ASADA they rules. Could. We could not speak unless ASADA or the athlete came forward with that particular information. We absolutely... See, see what she said there? ASADA or the athlete. Um, you know, but they knew about the positive tests. So, you know... Where's, where's the flow of information gone wrong here? They actually knew about the positive tests. ASADA would have informed Swimming Australia of the positive test as well as the athlete. We support MAC. We have a zero tolerance policy in relation to performance enhancing yeah, drugs. Right. And, uh, um, and actually, Shana not competing at the World Championships demonstrated how our system in Australia is actually working. Kate Campbell was left to respond to this bombshell. I feel like our swim team is sort of being thrown to the wolves here, the wolves being the media. Um, how's the rest of the swim team? What's the morale like right now? Because Mac Horton, I saw him on the news last night and he didn't look very happy. Well, Mac, I think the, the whole team was just focused on getting through the last part of the World Championships and certainly I'm sure that they will speak more in the, in the coming days. Kate was completely comfortable to speak uh, to media on the Saturday night. Certainly it had only been a couple of hours since the story broke, so a, a decision was made that Kate would make a, make a small comment um, in relation to that and we would try and get back to focusing on performance. OK, well, this is certainly the big story of the moment. Uh, Lee Russell, we appreciate you fronting up to talk about this. Thanks for your time okay so let's let's get stuck into this <clears throat> so that's the official swimming australia which i've pulled to bits now let's look at uh, let's go back to my safari window and let's start investigating a bit more what i found uh what have i found here that was the uh, prohibited substances it's uh, asadi is An australian sports anti-doping authority website um, now here we go. So we've got here. Uh, this is this is one of the things that came out this is, uh, today. Uh, Soon as the swimmer Shana Jack promoted a sports supplement on social media last year, so they're, they're trying to push a story that um, her sp her sports supplements that she was promoting um, were contaminated. And, you know, if, if I was <clears throat> Shana's lawyer, I'd say um, I, wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be pushing this uh, excuse for your positive because, you know, you're, you're, you're basically going to uh, defame and they've listed, they've actually listed the, uh, the manufacturer of the supplement here. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be accusing that because, <clears throat> first of all, you've got to prove it. First of all, you've got to prove it. And that would be my advice to Shana. You've got to prove that the supplements that you're taking from your sponsor, mind you. <laughs> so you're getting sponsored by these people and then you're going to throw them under the bus. Really? You know? You've got, you've got to prove that this suppl these supplements are contaminated. So you're, basically you're just defaming this company that's, that's been sponsoring you. And not a good thing to do, <laughs> really. She's going to, she's going to get herself into a whole world of trouble here. Right, so, and also, what it says here is that, uh, where we go, da, 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 da. I read here that um, Swimming Australia's sports supplement policy has lists two websites that audit supplement brands and suggest swimmers only use supplements that have been audited. So it's very clear, you should not be using uh, 
you know, third party supplements that you're getting sponsored by, you should stick to the ones that have been from the official audited companies. Now, <clears throat> so it says here, you know, as I'd, as I'd suggest the ABC would say as well, the ABC is not suggesting Extremo, Extremo post sports recovery was a source of the ligandrel found in Jack's A and B samples, and you know, it probably wasn't. You know, I, I'm sort of thinking, I'm sort of erring on the side that maybe is an excuse. Who knows? Yeah, I'd, I'd rather do that than than uh, than accuse the sports supplement um, company of 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 uh, you know spiking their supplements with uh, prohibited substances because that's basically what she's trying to say. That's what she's saying that it was in a supplement. And this is one of the supplements she was taking. So anyway, so now we've got <clears throat> now comes the bombshell. Now comes the uh, the mic drop moment. Down here you've got uh, in this box here, you've got her two page statement. Now I've actually got the two page statement. And I'll I'll see my PDF viewer here, and so so we can see it better. I'll go to the uh, PDF screen, and I should be able to pick it up. Uh, it should be under should be under preview, shouldn't it? preview statement here we go so this is uh, Shana Jack's uh, statement two-page statement and uh, there's a um, I'm very surprised that these investigators so-called investigative journalists haven't picked this up and I'll read through it and um, I'll I'll uh, see if you can pick up what I picked up and goes okay the day my life turned upside down on the 12th of July I was called to Swimming Australia head coach's room. I had just been out shopping with my teammate, irrelevant, unaware of what I was walking into. I was happy and bubbly as always. That all changed when I walked through the door to be told Asada had called. Now this is very interesting. My brain instantly went into frantic thoughts. Something was wrong. I had never missed a test. It wasn't my time slot. What? It wasn't my time slot. So why, so why would they want me? So what's going on here? That was just that was just like a light bulb moment to me. It's not my time slot. Are they saying that they've got a, the Swimming Australia have a deal with Asada to say that each athlete has a has a specific time slot that they get tested? How crazy is that? If that is the case, if she's and, and who and who is like. Why didn't somebody proofread this? I, I picked this up. That is, that's just like a bombshell there. It wasn't my time slot. <laughs> They're saying, you know, you just told Asada, Asada had called and her thoughts were, oh, it's not my time slot. Why, why are they calling me? I, I didn't miss a test because it's not my time slot. Like, are they getting specific time slots? Are the swimmers in the Australian swim team getting specific time slots where they know they're going to be tested? That's just that's just crazy. That means you could just take substances all you want, and that goes against what um, <clears throat> what uh, Swimming Australia said. That um, I'll I'll actually I'll do a uh, where are we? Here we go. I'll I'll, I'll line up this video here. Uh, let's have a look here. There we go. All right. And this video, oops, let's get back, get my video back up. In this video here, the Swimming Australia talks about how they get randomly tested. They get randomly tested. So let's have a look here. Uh, let's see if I can get this up. Well, certainly we've only been notified of one adverse test finding. And, and uh, uh, what I would say is that our mm. swimmers are constantly tested in and out of competition. The, uh, the ASADA team uh, turns up in, in all sorts of places where the team is. And uh, the team is also always uh, understanding that they can be tested at any time in any place. So that goes totally against what Shana was saying, that... Um they have specific time slots. I'll, I'll read it again. <clears throat> Here we go. That all changed when I walked through the door to be told Asada had called. My brain instantly went into frantic thoughts. Something was wrong. I had never missed a test. It wasn't my time slot. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's... Is that, that's certainly what I'm thinking it means. That they're actually getting told when they're going to be tested. Which is totally different to what uh, the CEO of Swimming Australia is saying. She's saying 
that they get randomly tested and you know is this just is this just a thing to you know lay to public spheres make them all feel wonderful that uh, our athletes going to be tested randomly and and they'll never cheat because they're going to get caught because they randomly get tested this goes totally against it I, i'm and i'm surprised that somebody hasn't proofread this and said what why is <laughs> why did you just give that information out that uh <laughs> you've just you've just told the public that it's, the tests aren't random at all. That you actually have a time slot. It wasn't my time slot. I don't know, am I misinterpreting this? Is there another explanation of why why that wording was so? It wasn't my time slot. Uh, to me, it seems <laughs> it seems um, it seems ludicrous. And, and okay, we'll we'll go down back through here as well. Uh, Felt my heart break instantly, you know, blah blah blah, you know, boo hoo, you know, we're not try the sympathy angle as well. Then she goes, my brain repeated over and over, I've always checked my substances. Well, if you've checked your substances, you're not know, return, return positives, are you? I didn't do this, what is happening to me, I've done nothing wrong, blah blah blah, etc. 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 And um, so to me, it seems like. Uh, I don't know whether it's Swimming Australia have done a deal with ASADA or how high up it goes, but um, you, sh you sh can't be giving athletes a time slot of testing. That's just that's just crazy. And it reminds me, I know I'm not sponsored by Tyler Hamilton or anything. I always go back to this book because this taught me everything there is to know about how athletes cheat the system. And um, <clears throat> this thing about not my time slot, it brought up a story that Tyler Hamilton talked about where at 10 p.m., <clears throat> 10 p.m. every night on the Tour de France, they uh, they knew that the testers wouldn't turn up after 10, 10 p.m. because logically, you know, when you think about it, logically, the athletes need to get some sleep. You can't just rock up at 3 a.m. in the morning and start testing. They need their sleep. So they knew that there would be no testers done no testing done between 10 a.m. and uh, 10 p.m. I mean, and you know, say 6 6 a.m. the next morning. So it was about an eight-hour window. So he used to joke about how um, the riders would just <laughs> just go ballistic with you know microdosing, microdosing all the substances, microdosing the EPO and everything, because the doctors said that within eight hours it'd be flushed out of your system. And you would not test positive. So, so he basically called um, the doping regulations a test on how disciplined you are and how smart you are. Just just following simple simple procedures. And uh, so this reminds. So when I, when I saw that, it's not my time slot. It's not my time slot. I, was, I, was, I can't be wrong about this. It wasn't my time slot. They are getting. Each each athlete obviously is getting a time slot when they're going to be tested. That's just crazy. That's not random testing. <laughs> wow. And that's the bombshell I came up with. Um, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Uh, what do you think? What do you think's going on here? That's uh, you know, comment below if you know any other way of interpreting that other than that Asada is is giving. Uh, you know the Australian swim team uh, <laughs> an actual time that they're going to be tested if that's not the case if I'm misinterpreting please uh, correct me below but that seems to me exactly what they're trying to do they're, they're trying to protect the Australian swim team and telling them exactly when they're going to be tested and all, all the public gets is oh, they get tested you know uh, once every three weeks say or uh, you know and it's all random. It's all random. They don't know when we're going to turn up. But uh, <laughs> wow! No, when I read that, I thought, oh, I've got, I've got to make a video on this because this is just crazy. It's, just, it's, it's what I'm thinking of. All right, guys. Um, running a bit over time here, so I'll leave it there. Uh, leave your comments below. Have I exposed the Australian swim team here? Have I, have I uh, created a bit of drama? <laughs> Well, bad luck because you shouldn't be you shouldn't be uh, being protected by the uh, anti-doping agencies. You should be, you know, 
been able to get caught. You know, I think this is incredible that that she's she's saying that she gets given the time slot of when she's going to be tested, and that's why she doesn't miss a test. And so she's saying, I'd never missed a test. It wasn't my time slot. So she, she sort of knows that, oh, you know, Wednesday afternoon or whatever, I'm going to get tested by Asada. And <laughs> you give athletes pre-warning of when they're going to be tested. You know, it's just like, yeah, why, why bother doing testing at all? Okay, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, I think the Chinese are going to have a field day with this, aren't they? But, uh, you know, we need to clean up our own backyard here. If we're going to be accusing the Chinese swimmers of of uh, of cheating the system, we've got to be squeaky clean ourselves and it doesn't look like we're squeaky clean at all and I'm, I'm really annoyed about this. So I'll leave it there and I'll see you next time. Cheers.